Although I've already beaten this game once, so why am I playing this again? The answer? Simple. I'm gonna have a different girl this time. The last four videos I was with Yuri, so it's down to either Sayori or Natsuki, but I'm not gonna do it any old fashioned way. I'm gonna do it with a coin toss. So heads, Sayori, tails, Natsuki. It's heads, so Sayori is up to bat here. Alright, and we're also gonna give these each girl a new voice, so. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently. And now we get tired of waiting up. In layman's terms, start showing some concern. But if she's going to chase me after like this, the let me try that again. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Siori catch up to me. Ha! Ha! I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. By the way, I'm trying to do my best to uh, Defon's voice, you know, from Happy Days. I think that's the show. Anyways. Eee! You see that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Ken. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. Well, you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. Eh heh. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near the street, we become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Ken, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. Unless it's Club Techno Chocolate. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. I'm gonna reiterate this for the last time. Only half that's true. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. I feel like surfing. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? No. Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I can let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Because apparently there's no brain in there. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Siori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Siori? Siori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting there and spacing out. So I came in. With a battering ram. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. Like I've said before, that's not much of an accomplishment. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Siari? Yeah? 
there is no way I'm going to your club. A meanie. Siori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. It hardly exists in at all. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Atsuki made cupcakes and everything. And the others made some really awesome pina coladas. Non-alcoholic, mind you. Eh, hey. Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. Stick with the former. I let out a sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes! Let's go! Let's catch some gnarly waves while we're at it, too! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sierra across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sierra, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member! Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Siori always wants to say nice things about you. Let's see here. Hmm. Gotta be a little more creative with her. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Ken. What a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. If not, get lost. Sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Or she's in the wrong school. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And vinegar. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Atsuki. Ah, uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Gan. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so generally feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Ken. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Full of skeletons. Er, I mean, still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa, man, far out! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes that grow to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking Natsuki. 
please come back, Ellie. Come back, Ellie's sister. Eh, <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sure, I grabbed one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. She already talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. Sloppy. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you for anything. Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori said, well, maybe. But not for you, you, you know, you dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep the whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? And I should have brought scones. Scones are really good. Uh, I, I guess. Hey, hey, hey. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Now spell. Scarf for brains. Eh, that's not... You insulted. Yuri looks away. I mean that... You know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Siori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Siori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home. Okay. As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the other major clubs. Excuse me. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Ah ha ha. Well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. They're all idiots. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. To reiterate, they're all idiots. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Because they're lazy. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow over this clue before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. I can only imagine, uh... I wonder how hard she'd have to work to find more. Well, anyways. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Ken, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's say. Yuri traces the rim of her tea cup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. 
level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes lit up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. Well, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how to write or can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Uh, I read a horror book once. It was called Puppies and Kittens. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. Or someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if it's a story that makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror! Oh, why's that? Well, I just... That's if you guys dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Well, what? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> Your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sorry saddles up n behind us, you can put her hands on her shoulders. But uh, I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet. I can understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience to Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Hmm? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Uh, um. Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Ken? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Hey, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sierra may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lose train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought, hmm, <laughs> Ken, you all, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes! I'm so happy! Sherry wraps around around me, jumping up and down. Hopefully with enough force to, uh, crash through the floor and onto the next floor. And then down to the next one, and then down to the next one. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Natsuki, why don't you eat my hair? Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. 
I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Ken, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Atsuki clean up their food. Hey Ken, since we're already done, since we're already here, you want to walk home together? That's right, Sierra and I never walk home together anymore. I guess she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Siori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Probably not. Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. At the end of the rainbow, with a pot of gold, and a leprechaun. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Alright, here we go. Well, I don't really know how this works. Um, now I just gotta find out what Siori likes. If I remember from the last play, she likes bittersweet things. Hmm. Over here in case I decide to screw up. Hmm. Well. Okay. Natsuki was my backup girl in case something goes wrong. Hmm. Nope. I guess I guess I already found out that Natsuki likes animals, so and cute things. Nope. I'm trying to ignore Yuri because I did her last time. That fits perfectly. I mean, so far I'm mostly hitting, uh, Tiaris. 
I know Crimson and Dark are out. Electricity, I think, is... Man. <coughs> Excuse me. Strike David. Nope. Shoot. There. Alright. Hi again, Ken. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha ha ha. If you tried to run away, we would have to hunt you down and drag you here against your own will. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Ken. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Now, come on, Lucky deserves any slack. She already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature, you know. Like, if you got a problem with that. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki pops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Ken always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without e me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sir, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Ken can become good friends too. Um, Sayori? Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. But wait, Sayori? Hey, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Hey, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I'm forbidden to think. If I started thinking, that'd be really dangerous to my health. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it, if you wanted. This is... I was this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Ciara and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki's running around in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read because I was too busy playing Counter-Strike last night. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. A festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is, is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. So let's dumb it down for everyone else. 
but it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their to their creative minds. To their feeble three pound brains. Mm. That doesn't solve the problem though. Hey, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Is Yuri taking this really seriously? It's rare to see, it's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Ah, uh, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! Ah ha ha, good thinking. And after the cupcakes, I will input a homing device into their brains. Allowing me to control them at my own will. Then we'll have new members. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Oh, brother. Cupcakes it is, then. Then I will put my control stuff into the cupcakes. And then I will control them with my intellectual thoughts. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Siori is still her usual pea brain self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Siori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. Like Frankenstein. Or zombies. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Second thought, no. What? I open my eyes to find Siori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. I almost, I almost bang my head against the desk and knock myself silly. Eh, <laughs> sorry. Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. That's three doors down. Does our school have a napping club? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh boy. That was unexpected. <clears throat> You're staying up late again, aren't you? You and your Counter-Strike and your Team Fortress 2. Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have to have less time for anime, you know. What makes you think I'm watching anime? Maybe I'm doing something else. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. Monica has super sensitive hearing. And if we... And if she eavesdrops in on our conversation, that'll make the situation even more awkward. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Siori. I don't need a babysitter, you know. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? Snap. That's... It's a secret. If I told you, I'd have to kill ya. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Yeah, it says right on top of your forehead. I oversleep. In fact, I'll, have to, I'll hold up a mirror for you so you can see it for yourself. Siri glances around at herself. How's it written all over me? With a sharpie. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all over, around all around here. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of Siri's hair, trying to straighten it out. 
And if she keeps having hair problems, I'll buzz it off. Man, you really need a brush for this. Or hair clippers. My hair's just really hard to get right. So shave it off. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste down on your collar right here. I tried to wipe off the same with my finger. Oh, you got mustard on your cheek right there. Ah, Jesus Christ, Sayori. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori? Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh, snap. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Eh heh. This is so funny. This is so embarrassing. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Because I'm not mature enough to do it myself. Hey, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? Should just use a stapler. I struggled to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? Eh <laughs> It did when I bought it. Then I grew up. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Oh boy. But don't say that out loud. Eh <laughs> Anyway. You look much better now, so... Ah. Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy! Ugh. It's not worth it at all! Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew. That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because! If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't let you do things like this. Good point. And you'd take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all those embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't see anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, let's just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Only if you set your alarm. Only if you stop playing Counter-Strike. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. So let's elope! Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Uh, but I was joking that time. And it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eight? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Ken, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember right the poem last night? Yeah? My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I can't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sierra and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sierra is on a... is on a re... <coughs> Excuse me. Try that again. Sierra's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose sleeve torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can now receive Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. 
I do the same myself. <laughs> Alright, Siari's is first. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing it with Siari first. She's my good friend after all. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Ken. Hey, I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Siari, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Ah ha 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 ha. Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Let's elope. Maybe in Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Ken poem. Creepy! And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. This is getting really weird. Siori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Siori. That's a... That's a bit of an understatement. <laughs> I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet. But that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Ken. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people, that's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. But I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that then. And if you don't, you owe me 50 bucks. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Hehehe. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Alright, it's the exact same poem as before. <clears throat> Dear Sunshine, the way you go through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. Like Rip Van Winkle. And I'm not mad. I want breakfast. I'll take two eggs, a side of bacon, some hash browns, and... Coffee. Yari, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still try my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. That's nice. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Yeah, just get a protein bar. That'll help you out. Anyways, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh... Yeah. But next time I won't forget. Two minutes later, what was I doing? And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Alright, Natsuki's is next. I guess everybody's gonna go straight down the list. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. I just didn't invoke any emotion. So basically it's not cute enough for your taste? Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Okay, yeah, same as before. 
Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, people can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well... Because... Oops, I think I did that wrong. My bad. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your... Bleh. Your mess. Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you doing great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. Like I'm gonna do to you if you don't stop. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something, idiot. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. <sighs> Let's see what yours has. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh! Sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um... It's fine. Don't force yourself. Blech. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay? This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er, uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Uh, so it's that bad. No. Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. True. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which in itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing, it must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. I I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. 
even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I actually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since, I've, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Just so your feeble little brain can keep up with my sophisticated writing. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you going to go, Siri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Ken. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her past, or in her last, remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left without nothing, or with nothing. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to speak over a stuffy nose. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Because if you fail, it'll be 20 lashes for you. And now, finally, Monica. I can. Having a good time so far. Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities, or things we can do better, I'm always listening with my radar ears. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ha 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 ha. Don't worry, Ken. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But if it's that sort of barrier, that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I have Monica in my poem. Mm -hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Siri would like. Is that so? You and Siri are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Ah, well. We may be good friends, but Siri and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when I read your poem. Whoops. Sorry, malfunction in the voice department. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Ha ha ha, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Siari's writing has the kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I'll always keep... Z -z -z Sorry. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole and wall. It couldn't have been me. See? The decoration, the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel. Line, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. 
It was too deep, stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very... Freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Aha, uh -huh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Lesson 73. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something done on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same point for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Monica, logging off. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I end up getting myself into. Across the room, Siori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? It's too complicated. Dumb it down a little bit. Hey, uh, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice like that to say? Thanks, but I really didn't, but it didn't really come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Huh. If I was looking for suggestions, I would ask someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Siari liked it. Ken did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. And Ken liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh, eh? That's not what I... Ugh. Y you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Ken appreciates my voice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how did you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ugh. Uh, um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I was the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Ken started showing up. Not Suki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little. This doesn't involve you. I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me, as if they just noticed I was standing there. Ken, she she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. Okay, maybe it's a little true. She started it. 
If she could get every step and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? You mean you should jump out at the reader, not force him to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Ken. But wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Ken? Um, well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? Sayari. It's not like I know anything about writing, but whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... Hmm. I'm trying to think here. You know what? We're going to do things in a little bit of a different direction here. I'm going to go with Yuri this time. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. Say, wait, that's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm, I understand. Yuri, eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I say. I didn't notice that I... I I'm sorry. Uh... But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Uh. Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Siari, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all of your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches at her own poem from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumbles up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki? She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, alright, I believe you. Thanks, Ken. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you part of the club. Blech. I'm thankful to have you as part of this club now. Eh, it's nothing. One more thing? On that one thing that Netsuki said? About, you know. I would never do anything so shameful, so... Hey? What thing did Natsuki say? Um, well, never mind that. I'm going to make some tea. Good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did y'all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun! Well, I say it was worth it. Oh, so I guess you decided to come back. It was alright. Well, mostly. Ken, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you'll learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job of impressing those I want to impress. I to myself with newfound determination. Ken, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Eh heh heh. Ciari beams at me. It truly has been a while since Ciari and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Ciari, about what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Atsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. 
I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Ken, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sari still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. I don't think she ever will. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Easy there, big fella. Well, we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I bet Yuri... Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Alright, round two. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. start this. The day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Ken. Yo, Sayori. How you doing? Looks like you're in a good mood today. Eh, <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which... I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that? All of a sudden. No reason, really. 
I just wanted to look at it. Uh... Sierra nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Uh, uh... I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? Simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Wah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ah ha ha. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah. I wasn't listening or anything. I was just... Something in my book. Yuri! Tell Ken to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Siori. Besides, you should only buy what you can reasonably afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, you're suffering as fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, but I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh, uh, <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Eh heh heh. Don't let her fool ya. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. And I'm a little nervous. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Siari. <laughs> Quap. Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Siori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... A... A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siori glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your expression, although. <laughs> and that's Suki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Siori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Siori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Yuri suddenly clasped her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Oh. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Hey. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where is Monica anyway? Good question. Have you heard of anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had to, something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Unlike the rest of us. A? You don't think she... She has a... Ha 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 ha. I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. 
Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. The boyfriend. What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. But I'll jump anyway. Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah ha ha. I was busy preparing. That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't where you play music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ken. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah ha ha, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really left the chance to share once I'm ready, which will be in about 20 years. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I chose to leave Siori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Siori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Ken? Ken? Siori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica are gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with Ken to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, uh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. And steal whatever, steal whatever's not nailed down. Hey, hey, okay, okay. That was just a suggestion. See if you can find a poster paper too, okay? Okay. Ready, Ken? Yep, let's go. Sierra and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sierra hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid into the mall or something. Sierra finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sierra, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Eh <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is going to take turns on the stage and recite their favorite poems. Uh, that sounds kind of dull. Ken, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, bringing it from its clinging roots. Caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to one end have I summoned this joy. For now when I look in every direction, the ones pro pro bleh. Sorry. Sorry, Ed. Sorry, that cookie really gave me some bad gas. Anyways, the once pro prosperous field before me. Man, that cookie is just giving me bad cramps. It's but a barren wasteland. Like that. Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Hey, You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Uh, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited. The festival's going to be so much fun. Sherry spins herself around in the hallway again. About 50 or so times until she gets really dizzy. And collapses on the floor. And pukes. Hey, Kenneth, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. 
the mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Ciari like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Ciari brings out a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom, keeping an eye out for laser tripwires and security cameras. Ciori heads straight to the closet, and I follow, being careful not to trip any of the alarms. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons. Ciori pulls out a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're Crayola brands. Not sponsored. They're kind of dirty, though. Ciori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. All right, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Kya! Ciori bends over and smacks her forehead and into the right into the shelf, knocking her silly. She falls onto the floor. Crayons spill all over her lap. She's knocked out cold. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Ciori clutches her forehead. Aw, does Ciori have a boo-boo? Does she need a kissy to make it feel all better? Geez, Ciori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Ciori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Ciori. But it hurts. Oh, suck it up. Just do it for a second. Ciori slowly releases from her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her fangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark in the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. She begins to see stars. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Ken, where would I even find ice around this time? Really? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, she always makes a silly joke. Ha <laughs> ha what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Oh, okay. I pat Siori on the shoulder and run into, out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Ooh, how about a nice tall cold one? Or if that doesn't work, a cool one would do. It doesn't really matter, since it will be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sari likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop Grams back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> how hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump of her head. Quick, how many fingers am I holding up? It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Ken? This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you? You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself, get a bum, break a bone, get laceration. And I would start crying really hard. Ah ha ha. And you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault, you know. Did I really do that? Yeah, don't, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Ken, I don't think you realize it. You're always thinking about other people, even after all these years. 
you're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. And I don't really don't do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Because you're an idiot. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Ken, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up for college, or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises, but, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sherry has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remained silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thoughts like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. She might stick her robots on us. Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sarah hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ugh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sherry out of the classroom. Sherry plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the classroom. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was about ready to start with sharing our poems and not hunt you guys down with my androids. Hey, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shell. Well, anyway, were you able to find everything we need? Uh-huh, I have it right. Hey? She very frankly glances around herself. I, I forgot all of the other stuff. Calm down, Siari. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. These were more concerned about that boo-boo on your forehead. Ha ha ha. Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Ken. Ah, uh, well, Siori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Siori. I made an adventure. Yeah, that. Ha ha ha. Okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. I have to make sure the cram box is closed tightly. I return to my seat. Alright, time to start with the... Sayori. Ken, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Hey, I'm not hiding anything. But, your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way. Not even Natsuki. Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. Grapes me out. I just mean that you're a re really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. You're fired. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? Like two plus two. I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori starts feeling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Ken, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Hey, hey, hey. Sarah, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Hey, 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 hey. <sighs> Are you even listening anymore? 
Nope. Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we get home. Really? Snap. Uh, I broke my pencil. Carrie hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being an attendant of a restaurant, she bumps right into me. So sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down to pick up the broken pencil. Sarah clutches the desk behind her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Ain't you clumsy every day? <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh. Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secret hiding in nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door, seeing if I'm home. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. They broke the deadbolt on my door. I was defenseless. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I practically pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it chatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Holy carp! Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did, stupid. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm not thinking too hard about it. The point is it came out good, so you should put so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. And in the afterlife, I'm gonna be writing as well. And when I get reincarnated, I'm still gonna be writing. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew. What? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Ah, <laughs> glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Hey, you think so? Yeah, well I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. Because you're both pea brains. But well, you never really struck me as her type. Siri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, er, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging you around a dead weight. Ouch! 
Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Yeah, this is a new one. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? She likes- Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It doesn't matter what you think. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. And I'm gonna lay the smack it down on Amy's candy butt. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Yeah, you hate Amy because she likes spiders. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an arrogant jerk. Or ignorant jerk. You know people like that? Of course, but it's about everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of if people find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. That is so true. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. That's another solid point. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow. So look forward to it. Alright, let's see what Yuri's has. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Ken. Those skills are really improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your readers to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um... Well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. Ah, oh, the raccoon again. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttling of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry and more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me his excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread. 
and I feel myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate into their own way. I want to express the way it feels more for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Hello, welcome to the uh, stream, how's it going? It's those sorts of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Hmm? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? How about someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She... she did? Weren't you paying attention? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... she's right. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like the two of you have that in common. That's... Well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. To answer your question, this is actually my second time playing. I did a stream a couple of days ago. That was my first time playing, and Yuri's my girl. Was my girl at that point. This one's a little bit different. I am now picking Sayori as my girl. Anyways, to me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I smacked her upside the head with a baseball bat. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. Ahaha, <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit right now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. And of course... Monica. Hi again, Ken. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You'd never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like a, the dynamic duo. You are Batman. And she is Robin. I do agree that Monica has her uh, good points and her bad points. The difference is that you kick butt and she is a sidekick. And I suppose... Anyways, enough about me rambling. Uh, that's kind of exaggerating it. I'm Batman and she's supposed to be Batgirl. Yeah, probably. Except the difference is, is that I see her run away from the Joker. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. Uh, I'm not shy, it's just... Ah ha ha, I'm just teasing. I know that it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? No, you're just a little, uh... Cuckoo! Cuckoo! Ah, uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now. It feels like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Oh Jesus, here we go again. Save me, the colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent grading waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless... 
load me. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ha ha ha. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. It's kind of like playing with my space on paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Ha ha ha. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Huh. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Lesson 113. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? There seems to be a malfunction in my logic system. Ah ha ha. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Shutting down. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come to sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members, you know. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siri has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but what that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the fat event. Monica, you made me trip up my own words. Ah, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing. Um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. The winner will receive $10,000 in cash. The losers will be obliterated to ashes. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems, too. Jerry's putting it all on these posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee hee hee. Siori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't ever start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. It's a sucky idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, say Yuri. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. I'm kind of surprised that Monica hasn't poked Natsuki in the eye. She'd be like, Bing! Ow! You poked me in the eye, you stupid! Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. Oh, and catching that gnarly wave! That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remained silent. 
Ciara looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Ciara and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. I gotta go back into the stash of arguments and see what I can pull out. Okay, fine. I guess I'll have to just get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. <sighs> I guess I really don't have a choice. Ahahaha. Ahahaha, <laughs> that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. There's far more worse things in life than reciting a poem in front of everyone. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Ha ha ha, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Ciara looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and, breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! Ha ha ha, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? I I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Oh, that's right. That's because I lit a fire underneath her butt. And she shot 20 feet into the air. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her hand head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what's hap- <laughs> Try that again. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. I don't know what else goes inside of there, but that's not my concern. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. But we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Knockout! Ding ding! Okay. I guess I'm next then. Ciari hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Uh, ah ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. Eh heh heh. Ciari. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting it to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. If you, Unfortunately, if you do that, there will probably be cobwebs in there. 
it's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Terry begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cherry like Ciaria's. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Ciaria's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Ciaria meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Ciaria finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Siori. <laughs> even Ken liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Hey, hey, hey. Then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Huh. Don't make me go before Ken. It's not like I can compare it to you guys anyway. Might as well let Ken lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and then step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think of it less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll prove over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... But why are y'all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. How high? Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She helps back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's in what it's like now. Zzz, sorry. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort in for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this, I can do this. Alright. I stand up. 
There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Siori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Siori? Yup! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? Simple, you don't. It's okay, Ken. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Siori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean, Siori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. Hehehe. <laughs> well, let's just, uh... Well, let's just stick with the, uh, goal, goal here of walking home with Sayori. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin it that for you. You're so silly, Ken. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it. So, Siori, I've already made up my mind. I think I screwed that voice up. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something new that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Siri to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Alright, um... I'm actually going to stop here. For the time being. Um, thank you everybody for watching, and thank you for putting up with my voice acting. I will see you all next time.